Greetings. This is Aldo Lauria Santiago. In this video, I'm presenting section number five or six of the workflow um, video series. And this one includes flow habits number one, covering this content listed here. Um, tabs, shortcut files, dedicated desktop, backing up your settings and your setup and cleaning up. Windows allows um, allows you to use any browser that you want. I use Chrome, and um, there's a few other alternatives. Vivaldi is an up-and-coming contender. There's others, but the key contribution for me of these new browsers is tabbed viewing. Uh, and with Chrome in particular, um, they have enhanced their tab viewing so it doesn't consume as much memory and resources as it used to be. So if you had 20, 30 tabs open, it would slow down your computer, but that's no longer the case, obviously, depending on the computer. So, um, so I encourage people to use tabs as a strategy of file managing and view managing rather than just as a, as a, as a temporary aid um, and this has uses in many different contexts but when you're doing research both in a kind of structured databases like worldcat or uh, jstor or whatever um, or kind of more open-ended browsing on the internet uh, Anything that is structured but has many options that lead in other directions, either parallel items or just simply completely different rabbit holes, um, um, get used to using tabs and, uh, and, and even using separate sessions. In other words, completely new browser sessions as a way of keeping these tabs. And of course, later on, you can save the tabs into um, your uh, book manager, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, link manager here, right? Or you can use these integrated apps within um, Chrome that allows you to save distinct sessions and merge distinct sessions. And that's for a different um, different video, but the, the option that Google has of extensions, manage extensions, you, you, what you would do here is find the uh, <clears throat> session managers and, and uh, tab managers, and there's many of them. Uh, and I have one where I can, for example, have a bunch of tabs open and it takes a screenshot, not a screenshot. It, it logs what is open in that particular session and saves it so that later, if I want to just open them all exactly where they were, I press click and it opens them all in, in, the, in the same exact, uh, uh, so, so tabs are useful, especially when you're doing research with um let me refine the search because this is not what i was looking for um, um where you have a bibliographic record of something that you were looking for but a you find a secondary item that is useful or even something that you want to put on hold and do later well you can do it now right the subject categories here of jeff's uh jeff gould's book uh you you're paying attention to this record but you notice this and you just open it on, on a different tab right so you use a right click on windows and there's even a keyboard shortcut which i think is uh control click and it opens it in the background, right? It doesn't even switch to it, right? 
so it's there for later right and if you see here it is right it's as if i had clicked on that link right so the thing is that as you do research while trying to stay focused on the thing you were really trying to do you can keep opening these secondary pages with the things that you're not quite doing right now right so if you go back to uh results from this search uh and you're going through this and let's say you limit it to books over here right uh and you're looking for the record on his this book on nicaragua but you find the one on el salvador like well i'm going to open it in the background and leave it there because um the um the uh it, it's not my primary goal right and the thing with research is that if you're doing good work you will find these secondary and tertiary pieces as you go through but it's really important to kind of put them on hold while you uh do your thing right without losing track of them so in this record for example there is a like oh wait let me revisit what's been published recently in el salvador right and that subject classification here it's like well i i would like to take a peek at that later right so you can keep adding tabs and then and then with with the help of of these uh, uh helpers that that chrome provides um I forget which one of these because I don't really remember the icons, but one of them is a session saver, right? Um, lately, I don't even I don't even bother. Lately, I don't even bother um, with these um, with with the session savers. Uh, one of actually the one I use is called Session Buddy, but I don't use them as much because now I can leave open many 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 tabs in different chrome sessions uh without it impacting the computer's uh, speed and resources so um okay now the next piece is the shortcut files resource and for that i have to go to um, file manager and um and I'll, I'll show you how I use this um, for the New York book. So this is my folder structure for my New York City research, folder on writing, and the New York City labor books, and <laughs> book one and book two. Yay. Uh, okay, so this is a, the folder structure for um, the, the the book manuscript as i work on it right and then what i do is this is one of the different versions of tools right in each folder for each chapter i have these shortcut links and um shortcut links are a thing a tool that a windows has i don't know if the mac world has it but where you can instead of copying a file into that folder um let me go to the other tab. This is how tab browsing is so useful, right? Um, you can, um, I'm going to open again the same folder, New York City Research, but this time I'm going to open the new New York City materials. And this is the stuff that I have gathered um, of New York City Research in the last, I don't know, few years. And, and I have it in a separate folder because I started gathering these things after I wrote most of the first the, of the two volumes. So it's material that I have to like go back and integrate or that I already have gone back with and, and kind of footnoted or reference or, or whatever, right? So in the case of, you know, chapter two of volume two, I have these shortcuts, right? and these are not files these are shortcuts and basically the easiest thing to do is you find an item that you want to research right uh this one for example 
and oh wait this fits in that chapter's discussion so i have to remember to to look at it because whatever i haven't looked at it yet so instead of copying the file over because i i don't that's not neat i like to keep the files where they belong right so this is the process there's two ways to do it the easiest way is you have a file for which you want to bring a shortcut to a different folder right so you copy the file and this looking at windows 11 so this is what it looks like in file manager so you copy it and then you go to the folder in which the link would be an appropriate reminder of of something you have to do as part of that work right so all the items in this folder for chapter uh whatever it is chapter two are links that i need to um review right and so you go to right click and instead of pasting the file which which you would it would make a copy of the file which is always a thing you can do but then you have to remember to delete them right you paste a shortcut you go to more options and you paste a shortcut and the shortcut there it is it actually has two versions of the same thing because i'd already done it once already so um and then what happens is if you're you know working in your flow of chapter two and you go to this folder in which you have saved all these important links to important items they serve as a reminder and as an actual link so you double click on it and it opens the file right um and there you have it right that's it's so 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 what you do in a in a in a planning sort of stage is you go through your kind of bizarrely structured research materials that are you know in whatever order you've made you've placed them right and these are obviously pdfs of things that i've gathered over the last few years i could modify uh, uh, sort them by date of arrival so to speak right um or just or do a search right for whatever items i would want to look at but then you copy the things that you think are going to be most useful into a chap a, a folder that is based on your writing flow as opposed to your research sorting okay so the shortcut file can be useful in many other ways also uh as a reminder you create a folder you you draw 5 10 15 items that you hold in disparate places but in that folder they work together because that's what's useful for you right uh and then you can delete the the links uh now the link doesn't work if you change the name of the file and the original file or if you change the location of the file so you have to remember that but the link will still be there with the name and then you can just reproduce the link for it's still a reminder uh, in, uh you know if, if unless you completely change the name right and you can't recognize the item so uh, so the link will have, as you see here, the full the full title, but it, then it says shortcut, right? Okay. Now, moving on to the next piece, which is dedicated desktops. Uh, when I am doing intensive writing and something else at the same time, I use the desktop option, which is... Um, a Windows um, feature that allows you to have completely new desktops, right? So this is what I've been doing here on this desktop, right? Uh, at least on this screen, which I'm recording, but basically you can see here um, what I have open. But, and on right now on this computer, I have a bunch of other stuff open, including the recording um, of the screen but I also have calendar and email and so forth. But if I want to clean up the clutter, you create a new desktop. And a new desktop means nothing. <laughs> it's a new work session. And I can open here whatever I want that is completely unrelated. Amazon shopping or whatever, right? Uh, and if your computer has enough resources, um, 
you can switch back to a, a, a crowded, right? So you can have two crowded desktops, meaning work sessions with software that's open. So you can have all your software for research and writing and then switch to a desktop that has, I don't know, video production or Amazon shopping or whatever. And, uh, you know, for people who spend a lot of time working on their computers, this is a very useful tool uh, in part also to hide the clutter without having to shut it all down. Uh, and, you know, at any given time, I might have, you know, all kinds of things that are open and 10, 10 word files and whatever. And suddenly I need to do something else. So I just open a new desktop and, and have it clean cut. Right. Um, okay. So backing up with the setup is a little trickier than, than, um, than, a regular tool. I, I don't know of any, I'm sure there are windows tools that allow you to do this, but the idea is this, that as you develop knowledge and skills of software, that your computer becomes very, very customized. And that's the main software tools that you purchase or download, but also these smaller tools uh, that you may get for free or you actually pay money for. And um, one way that I found is to create a list of apps, right? Um, or a screenshot of all your apps. Uh, obviously, these apps are all listed in, in the... Um, in the menu as you see here um but right now i think i just have a text list from my last really big peak moment of of software experimentation um but at any given time that includes indexing software backup software duplicate software um file renaming software uh, image reduction software and sometimes windows develops or integrates these things that then you don't no, no longer need a secondary piece of software so the you know a couple of of software kind of falls off the list but what the point is that it's really important for you to have um a sense of the software that you have found useful over the years and and installed in a computer because the it's easy to back up your files and then your data files and then uh, pass them over to a new computer but in a new computer you then have to reinstall all your software uh, and uh, sometimes you need that list right the other piece that has to do with this um, is the file structure of the file habits that might or might not carry over in a backup right because all these software pieces they want you to save whatever files they produce in different places and sometimes you customize where the files are saved and sometimes that customization doesn't place those files inside the files that get backed up for you if you do backups which you should check the uh, the other video right um so that for example i have one of my desktop scanners i don't want the the files that it produces to go into my regular file structure so i have it go to my desktop in other words the actual holding place that you see when you open the computer there's a folder in there for scanning that then i in from that folder i will delete or produce a pdf and just basically it's just a holding place uh but i have to remember that that's how it was functioning right um and if i have a problem with um with uh, the scanning or whatever i have to uh, maybe even take that folder and put it in a place where it does get backed up, right? Uh, so the more, you know, the, another one is the clipping software uh, and the video screenshot um, 
software that I'm using right now, uh, where does it save? Does it save within my file structure that gets backed up onto my portable, my separate drives or the cloud? Or is it somewhere else hidden sometimes in folders that Windows creates or the software creates that you don't regularly visit? Like the graphics, there's a folder for for uh, uh, music and and photos, and that Windows still creates. That is like nobody uses that, but sometimes the stuff gets saved in there. Uh, so, so the point is for you to develop a system in which you can keep track of all the software and um, and how you organize it, even even how i organize the the software icons for turning them on at the bottom of the screen where where you turn on software with these little shortcuts on windows um i have to reproduce that because i have multiple machines and and i got 12 or 14 pieces of software and it has to make sense where i can quickly go and say okay email is in the middle you know, file managers are on the left, browsers are on the far left, etc. They're always in the same place for, for the different computers. I think now Windows, um, no, actually Windows synchronizes certain settings across computers if you allow it, but, but not this setting. So it, this has to be set manually. Um, okay, so post-production cleanup is something that happens less often right but basically any project leaves behind all kinds of garbage backups emergency backups secondary backups duplicates of files so there's really only two lessons here and one is that you just go through your folder structure and clean it up you know try to be elegant and when you have free time to just because later, if you're looking for something and you don't remember how you titled or organized the file or a folder, it'll really help you to have have it be neat and follow some sort of logic uh, and a consistent logic. Your projects have a writing section, a research section, a sources section of this, the, you, you know, whatever it is that it's consistent. Uh, proposals and grants, and I, I tend to keep all, any file that has to do with it with a research aid, a bibliography, or a guide to research or a guide to archives. I keep those separate, right? So I know where it should be. And therefore, the cleaning up part means that make sure, making sure that everything is sorted in whatever way you want. And the second thing is typically um, uh, there's, there's two things, actually, in this, in this category. Um, I use duplicate file finder. Let me see if it opens on the right screen. <clears throat> yeah. And I actually, I'm not sure if I paid the license for, for this one, but basically, and there's a, there's a couple, I actually have two of these software pieces. Um, basically it allows you to find duplicates, right? And you can search with the same name or you can skip the name and fi find files that share the same attributes, like in size. When a file, when two files are exactly the same size, you should look at them and see which is, which is, uh, now sometimes duplicates are intentional. Uh, and if you use EndNote and you have um, PDF files attached to your EndNote records, you very likely to have, at least that's the way I do it, a PDF for the EndNote uh, attached to EndNote and a PDF file in your own research files uh, because that's how it arrived, a scan of something or other. Uh, and I like to keep them both. One that is in, 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 in indexed in and included in the EndNote record and one that is separate that I can look at within my folders, right? Uh, but there's other kinds of duplication and, um, and also the additionally to, to this, um, part of the kind of cleaning up um, is the renaming utility, right? Which is this. And I know it looks really daunting, and it is kind of daunting. <laughs> uh, but 
let's say that I've scanned a bunch of stuff or somebody sent me a bunch of stuff and it's all organized into individually named PDFs. And I want to keep this PDF separate. I don't want to merge them into one, right? Which is a thing you can do, but I have examples in which I need the PDFs separate. Um, but they have strange names and because that's how they came out of the scanner or their system, their cataloging system. So with this, you can choose files, not just one file, but multiple files. And due to them, operations simultaneously. So let's say that, let me see if I can find an example here that's easy to show. So I have a bunch of files here, right? They belong to a, the new sources folder for my New Jersey research. And if I had wanted to change all of these, I just select them all. The This is new, right? This is news, whatever. So you see here the old titles and the new titles. And the new titles is the old title with the this is news prefix, right? And if I wanted to do a, a, a I'm sorry, a, a suffix, I can add it at the end, right? And you can add numberings. For example, if I wanted to keep the title but add a number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I can do numbering. Right? This is a fantastically useful tool for um, bulk renaming. Literally, that's what it's called. Uh, so, bulk running, renaming and duplicate finding, uh, especially of you know hum humongous PDFs that you download to your computer, you that clog up your your hard drive so um anyway that's enough for the flow habits uh so we covered chrome tags um shortcut windows shortcut files dedicated desktops backing up your setup and also post-production cleanup and obviously some of these are inspirational in the sense that you can try to figure out what they might mean for your hardware software materials uh flow um but the idea is to sort of keep keep each one of these going uh as part of your flow habits take it easy